hang mic. We didn't do a test of this one. Oh, okay. <laughs> oh, it's on. I can hear it. It works. Test, test. Good morning. As we gather today on these ter treaty lands, we are in solidarity with indigenous brothers and sisters to honor and respect the four directions, lands, waters, plants, animals, and ancestors that walk before us, and all of the wonderful elements of creation that exist. We acknowledge and thank the Mississaugas of the Credit First Nation for being stewards for this traditional territory. Great start to the day. Just a spoonful of loving helps the medicine go down in the most delightful way. We all received spoons today as we came into church. Does that mean we have to take medicine? What if I told you that these spoons were for a different kind of medicine? Oh, okay. One that comes in the form of service from the Walton United Church Outreach Committee. And it involves lots of love, but absolutely no bad tasting medicine. Would that help you? Oh, yes, but I don't know if everyone here knows what the Outreach Committee does. What kind of medicine does it serve? The kind that helps to fix the community. Needs like homelessness, poverty, isolation, food, insecurity. The Outreach Committee is a group of people from Walton who meet to plan fundraisers, who advocate for, 
and who reach out to those needing a helping hand. Just like Jesus asked us to do, everyone is welcome to be on the outreach committee. Beth is one of our newest members. Social justice has always been very important to me, so I was delighted when it was suggested that I join. Now, I would like everyone to hold up your spoons. What does the tag say? It says that Jesus wants us to pass on a spoonful of loving to others, especially to Health Partners International of Canada. It gives us a chance to donate to this important charity. I am relieved that we are letting others know that they are not alone. As a member of the Walton Outreach Committee, I invite you to use these spoons for the good medicine they can provide to others. And I would like to thank Lois Brown from AgePIC for coming to speak to us today. This is going to be a great way to start 2023. I'd now like to invite you to join in with the hymn, I Am the Light of the World, verses 1 and 2 of 87 in Voices United. morning. I'm going to do the call to worship. Please follow along with all. One person is not enough. Together we are powerful. The world's problems are many and great. Together we can change the world. So many people are in need. Together we can help them. Let us pray. O oh God who cares for us, her people, call us to be caring people in this world. Teach us to look around with clear vision and see others as they are, others in need of food, shelter, kindness, and love. Help us to guard children, uphold caregivers, and welcome refugees both those from outside our country and those within it. We need your help, O oh Lord, to tear off our blinders, which allow us to see only our own needs, those of our family and our close-knit group. In this outreach service, we ask that you teach us to accept your guidance, to love others, and to be the hands of your Son, the Christ. Amen. Please join me in the Lord's Prayer. Our Father, who art in heaven, 
hallowed be thy name. Thy kingdom come. Thy will be done on earth as it is in heaven. Give us our day, our daily bread, and forgive us our trespasses, as we forgive those who trespass against us. And lead us not into temptation, but deliver us from the evil. For thine is the kingdom, the power, and the glory, forever and ever. Amen. We now invite the children to come forward with Allison for the youth story while we sing verse 1 of I Heard the Voice of Jesus, number 626 of Voices United. friends? Everybody wide awake this morning? Kind of. How's it feeling? Are you all feeling well and healthy? Because we have special visitors here today and they're here to talk about health. So it got me thinking, what do we need to be healthy? <laughs> oh, okay. Okay. Let me turn this one off. Is that better? Oh, we gotta be on. Hello. <laughs> nope. <laughs> we're just gonna hang out here for a while. Yeah. Time for a nap, all you people who said you were tired. Are we on? Oh, now I think we're on. Can you guys hear me? You can hear me, you're right in front of me. <laughs> Wendy will give me a wave when we're good. Yeah, oh, yay. I don't usually get accused of being too quiet. So, Jim's laughing a lot. <laughs> Back to the beginning. We're talking about health because we have a special guest here from Health Partners International Canada. So, I wondered if you guys know, what do we need to be healthy? Yeah. We need exercise, that's true. Yep. Healthy food. Healthy food. Anything else? What makes you healthy? Yeah. Oh, yum. Delicious food can be healthy, too, can't it? Yeah. You can have a healthy mindset. <gasps> We're going to talk about that. So most of the things we think about are about healthy bodies, right? We talked about exercise and food. And there are things that if we put into our bodies can help make us healthier. And then there's things that if we put in our bodies maybe aren't so good for our health, right? So we might want to have less of the less healthy things and more of the more healthy things. Tony, do you want to pull something out of this bag? Pull one thing out. Now tell me, hold that up so everybody can see it. Sugary, yummy cereal. Is that something we want more of to make us healthy or less of? Less, I think. It doesn't mean we can't have it, but maybe we want less of it. Do you want to grab something, Kiki? See what you found. Oh, what's this? A carrot. Should we have more of carrots to keep us healthy or less? Yeah. More vegetables. They are. They're good for you. Okay. You want to grab something, Mariana? What do you got? Ooh, potato chips. Is that, does that go in the more pile or the less pile? Here's our more pile. That goes in the less pile. All right. Who else wants to grab something? Do you want to grab something? See what you can find in there. And tell me if it goes in the more pile or the less pile. Oh, that's fudge. Mmm. I know it looks like cheese, but it's not. So does fudge go more pile or less pile? I think it's very sugary. 
it's a very sugary sweet treat. So do you think a lot of it keeps you healthy or you should have less? I think you're right. It's delicious. That's sad. I don't the, carrot's <laughs> the carrot's lonely. Why don't you grab some? Do we have any more more foods? Oh, what about the apple? Where does that go? The apple can join our carrot friend. Is there anything else in there or are we done? <gasps> Pull it out. Let's pull it out and see. Emma hasn't done one yet. Emma found the orange. I think more pile, right? So those are things that we put in our bodies. And too much of the things that aren't great for us don't help us have healthy bodies. But Mariana mentioned having a healthy mind. And I was thinking more of a healthy spirit, which is the same thing. And there are things that if we put into our spirits can help us have a healthy spirit. But there's also things, if we have too much of them, are not good for our spirit, right? So do you want to pull out a card? Let's see if we can put these into more or less piles. What does the card say? Patience. patience. If we put patience into ourselves, do we want more of that to be healthy? I think so. Less patience isn't good for us. Who wants to take a turn? Grab one. What's that one say? Anger. More pile or less pile? Yeah, we all want less anger if we want to have a healthy spirit. Keep going. Can you grab one? <laughs> That's all right. You can take one and then put the other one back. There we go. So what does that say? Okay, well, let's, here. Let's give you the one on the top. It says jealousy. Is jealousy something that keeps you healthy? Yeah, we want less of that. You're right. All right, keep going. All right, just grab one and put the rest back. Okay. Bullying. We know we don't, we don't want more of that. That's not good for our spirits, whether you are the person bullying or you're the person being bullied. Do you want to come try one? We want less of that for everybody. Oh, what does that one say? Can you read it or do you want me to read it? It says self-esteem. That means feeling really good about yourself and talking positively to yourself. Do you think we want more or less of that? More. That's good for our spirits when we're kind to ourselves and we say, yeah, you know what? I am awesome. Who else needs to grab one? Emma, you want to grab one? That one is the opposite. It's self-doubt. Is that healthy for us? No, that's not healthy. Let's put that in the less pile. We don't want that. Oh, well, there's more. You want to grab one? Mariana, you can grab one. <laughs> what does that one say? Oh, I see. The one on top says friendship. Definitely the more pile. What about prayer? Which pile? The more pile. More prayer makes our spirits healthy. And the last one is kindness. Which one does that go in? So just like putting healthy foods in your body is good for you, I want you all to put healthy things in your spirits. Let's get away from the negative things. We can't avoid them entirely, but we can have less of them in our lives and focus and choose the things that we need more of, right? Yes? Can you guys say a prayer with me? I think we might need God's help to do that. Okay. Loving God, thank you for our health. Thank you for keeping our bodies strong. Our hearts happy and our minds clear. Help us to make the right choices to nurture our bodies and our spirits. And we pray this in Jesus' name. And we say, Amen. And now let's go to Sunday school.
This morning's scripture is from 2 Corinthians 8, verses 7 through 15. This passage is from Paul's letter to the Corinthians concerning Christian giving from the Good News Bible. You are rich in all you have, in faith, speech, and knowledge, in your eagerness to help, and in your love for us. And so we want you to be generous also in the service of love. I am not laying down any rules, but by showing how eager others are to help, I'm trying to find out how real your own love is. You know the grace of our Lord Jesus Christ. Rich as he was, he made himself poor for your sake in order to make you rich by means of his poverty. My opinion is that it is better for you to finish now what you began last year. You were the first, not only to act, but also to be willing to act. On with it then and finish the job. Be as eager to finish it as you were to plan it and do it with what you have now. If you are eager to give, God will accept your gift on the basis of what you have to give, not what you don't have. I'm trying to relieve others by putting a burden on you. But since you have plenty at this time, it is only fair that you should help those in need. Then when you are in need and they have plenty, they will help you. In this way, both are treated equally. As the scripture says, the one who gathered much did not have too much, and the one who gathered little did not have too little. Please join me in the scripture response. Just as Paul encouraged the Corinthians to do what they could to, to help others, we too should help others in our local, national, and international communities where we can. We, we know, know that, that what we, we have, have to give feels insignificant compared, compared to, to the needs, needs of others. others. But, but let, let our gifts, gifts of time, time or money, money or encouragement be the spark that can change the world. Just as Jesus showed his followers how to walk in the path of doing for others, so we too should feel compelled to listen to the stories of those in need and truly understand their needs. We will listen to today's message and respond with gratitude that we are able. Good morning. It's my pleasure this morning to introduce our outreach speaker, Lois Brown, the president of Health Partners International Canada, who will bring us a fascinating look at the goals, achievements, and experiences of HPIP, currently working in 30 countries in the world. Lois came to us today from her home in Newmarket with her husband, Kelvin, a little background, they have two adult daughters and a gorgeous grandson. Lois and Calvin operated their own businesses for many years, providing counseling services throughout Canada in the areas of the return to work programs. In 2008, Lois was elected as a member of parliament in her constituency and served as an MP for two terms. Now, in her role of President of Health Partners International Canada, Lois brings a wealth of experience working both with government agencies and not-for-profit stakeholders. She served as Parliamentary Secretary for International Development for six years, traveling on behalf of the Government of Canada, speaking at global conferences, and meeting with government officials and civil society organizations around the world. Lois knows the need for Health Partners' mission around the world. She was a member of HPIC's board leadership for several years before officially moving to serve as president in March 2022. Well, good morning, everyone. Um, may I take off my mask to speak? Is that all right with you? I don't want to do it without permission, but I just find it a bit of an impediment, so thank you. I really want to say um, thank you so much for including Health Partners in your Outreach Sunday. It, uh, it is very generous, and Ruth, thank you for that kind introduction. Very nice. I spent some time on the Walton Memorial United Church website 
just to find out a little bit about to whom the people were that I was going to be speaking this morning. And I am incredibly impressed with the investment that you have made in your community. First of all, you brag three choirs. And my goodness, most churches have a hard time even finding enough people for one choir, much less three. So all the programs that you have going on for the people in your community, it really is quite astounding. And what you demonstrate through your website as well is the incredible care you have for the people of the world. So again, thank you for inviting me to be with you this morning, and I hope I can shed a little bit of light on what exactly Health Partners is about and what we do. We are an international charity. We have our offices right here in Oakville. 2907 Portland Drive has been the warehouse and distribution center of Health Partners for several years now. We do have an administrative office in, in Montreal, and the reason it is there is that when Health Partners was initiated in 1990, almost all of the pharmaceutical companies with whom we work had their headquarters in Montreal. But in the early 90s, with the threats of separation that were happening in Quebec, and with, of course, the changes in the language laws, many of those headquarters were moved to Mississauga, and therefore, Health Partners also made a move and chose Oakville as its headquarters. You know, there is a Native American saying that says, he who tells the stories wins. So I thought I would start with telling you just a few little stories. In January 2011, when South Sudan had just become an independent country, I flew in a 12-seater aircraft from the capital, Juba, to a smaller town, maybe not a village, but a smaller town in the northwest called Wau. Now that's spelled W-A-U. However, when I looked out the window at the landing strip below, I thought, wow, we're going to die. Because the landing strip was just a whole series of moguls. But what was most disconcerting about this landing strip were the relics of dead, rusted out airplanes that lined that whole landing strip. <laughs> Did not give me confidence that we were going to make it. What was my what was my saving grace, I believe, and what was the, the uh, reason that the trip turned out to be so um, worthwhile and beneficial was that our pilot was actually Canadian trained, in Hamilton, no less. So we, uh, we, did have, we did have an adventure, but I'm still here to tell the story. Malawi. East Africa, the land of David Livingston. All of us studied the stories and adventures and explorations of David Livingston. Malawi is a country of great agricultural land, and it has the most beautiful waterscape in Lake Malawi. But the people of Malawi suffer terribly from malnutrition. There was a very serious drought there some years back. Um, actually, a very interesting movie was made of a young fellow who used the wind. It was called Harness the Wind. If you haven't seen it, I encourage you to watch it. It is a very inspiring movie about a young man who, who fought very hard for his own education. But the drought caused the government of the day to determine that people in Malawi would never again go hungry. And so in order to make that happen, they gave people a cash subsidy for growing corn. It's a, it really is a cash crop, because for every bushel of corn that was brought to the government, they would get money in hand. And so what you see 
is that there are silos all across the land of Malawi that are filled with corn. Now, corn may fill empty tummies, but it doesn't give people the nutrition they need to grow and to survive. And so I saw in a hospital east of Lilongwe, in a clinic, I saw little ones who suffer from a condition called stunting. They are stunted not only in their physical development, but they are stunted in their brain development and will never achieve the things that little ones ought to be able to achieve with the proper vitamins and minerals that they should get from a balanced diet. In an SOS village in Zambia, where I met children who were orphaned or abandoned, children too who suffered from illness and disease, although the SOS villages were trying to step in and, and help with that. Sorry. Two and a half year old Angela. She wrapped her arms around my legs and she wrapped her hands around my heart. How do you ever possibly walk away from an experience like that without your life being changed forever? All of these are stories from my time in Africa, visits required in my responsibilities as Parliamentary Secretary for International Development, but it gave me incredible, incredible insight and I can tell you that being appointed parliamentary secretary was a great honor. And the prime minister actually entrusted me with the responsibility for the maternal newborn and child health initiative, the Muskoka initiative that was started in Canada. And I know that I had the opportunity to make a lasting and long time impression on the lives of moms and babies who otherwise may not have survived. And so it was the best of times, it was the worst of times. I've had the experience of eating meals with princes and kings. I have traveled in some of the most remarkable places in the world, but I've also seen the sick and the hungry outside palaces. I've had an audience with the Pope, but I've held babies in my hands who would not be named before their fifth birthday because why bother? Many of them are never going to survive until their fifth birthday. I've had tours of remarkable architecture, some of the most fabulous structures that mankind can make but I've also walked in the shoes of the most needy. And when you've spent time in the slums of Dhaka in Bangladesh, you know that you just can't rest. You just can't possibly rest until life changes for those who need help. I am, I am haunted by, by the eyes of mums who just want their babies to have the medicines and the nutrition that they need to survive, to grow, and to thrive. And I'm haunted by those little ones in Malawi who just need vitamins and minerals to develop healthy minds and healthy bodies. And I'm haunted by the face of Angela. She deserves a life of hope and health and opportunity. Which is why when Health Partners approached me in 2018 and asked me to join the board of directors, I was delighted. I'd been introduced to Health Partners when I was parliamentary secretary because my responsibility to the minister was that I would meet with all of the smaller stakeholders the, the agreement that we had was that anybody who applied for 
$2 million and over in, uh, in grants from the government of Canada. Those ones went to the minister's office. So the minister had a pile maybe that big. Anything that was an application for $2 million and under came to my desk. So my pile was this big. <laughs> I did a lot of reading. And although health partners had had a project with the government of Canada during a time in Afghanistan in the early 2000s, health partners did not have government money and to this day does not have money from the government of Canada. We hold a unique place in the NGO world, but government of Canada does not see gift in kind as a style of assistance that they want to support. So although the Afghanistan project was hugely successful in providing medicines to the people of Afghanistan, uh, since that project finished in 2007, there has not been more government money into the hands of health partners. So what is Health Partners International Canada? Health Partners is a Canadian charity, as I said, based here in Oakville. And I was always impressed with their business model because Health Partners works with the pharmaceutical industry in Canada to provide essential medicines to developing countries and to little ones like Angela. In my mind, this is sustainable development. It's individuals ensured that they get the medicines they need. They need to be able to live, to work, to raise a family, and what better gift can we possibly give? I sort of backed into the position of president of Health Partners. It was kind of an interesting, I'm sorry I have my back to you. I feel badly, <laughs> I just, I feel like I need to talk to the choir too. Preach to the choir, is that it, Jim? Preach to the choir. Um, I, I was on the board and I had been asked if I would be vice chair. And, uh, and so I was assisting in my small, in my small way. It was, um, it, it was kind of interesting because our president rather abruptly left for a new position that she was offered. And I contacted our chair. Um, many of you will know Mike Rinders, who is the chair of the board. Mike is a resident here in Oakville. Maple Rinders is his family's company. And I contacted Mike, who was away on a month-long camping trip with his wife, and I said, look, can't leave the staff unattended, that's not fair. Uh, somebody needs to hold the reins until we find new leadership. I actually was part of the interview team. We interviewed seven people who were either asking for the moon in compensation or they just weren't the right fit. But I volunteered to hold the reins until Christmas and you all know what happens when you volunteer. Ruth, you're a perfect example of that. But I also believe that God has his purposes for me being in this place at this time. And uh, I believe it is for such a time as this. I'm honored to lead a small but very mighty team of staff who are people absolutely committed to the mission of health partners and to what we need to accomplish. And I am also amazed at the generosity of our pharma partners who give products so generously to us for distribution overseas. So I thought I would just stop here for a moment. We've got a very brief video. I don't know, can you see it from the back? Perfect. After a devastating earthquake <laughs> hit you. Iran in 1990, five pharmaceutical companies came together to respond to this emergency by donating medicine and HPIC's health and hope mission was since then, HPIC's work has expanded from providing medicine donations to working with partners, local governments, and health facilities to strengthen healthcare systems around the world. For over 30 years, we have been providing health and hope to adults, seniors, and children in over 130 countries. 
Small but mighty, HPIC impacts over 1 million people each year by delivering free essential medicines and healthcare services to vulnerable communities in Africa, Asia, Latin America, and the Middle East. But how does our mission work? The strength of HPIC rests in its collaborative working model and large network of partners that bring together different actors in the healthcare system. Pharmaceutical and healthcare companies partner with HPIC by donating medicines, medical devices, and supplies. These are then distributed to equip Canadian medical teams, humanitarian organizations, hospitals, and local clinics in the most remote areas to carry out our mission of providing health and hope to children and families living through extreme poverty, natural disasters, and refugee crises. HPIC works closely with international partners to execute projects, investing in training, tools, equipment, and other capacity building initiatives to strengthen healthcare systems to build stronger and more resilient communities. With financial support from corporations and foundations, everyday Canadians and volunteers, HPIC helps to meet immediate and long-term needs to improve health and achieve lasting impact. Poor health is linked to poverty and poverty is linked to poor health. HPIC is helping to break this cycle by providing access to medicine, enhancing pharmaceutical management, addressing non-communicable diseases, and improving women's and children's health around the world. HPIC is training and equipping community health workers with bikes and backpacks filled with medicines and diagnostic tools so that they can interact within their communities to treat the common illnesses of those who normally do not have access to medical treatment. Good health makes everything possible. Children are ready to learn, parents feel empowered and are better fit to provide for their families, which results in communities moving forward. As the only Canadian charity of its kind, HPIC is responding to the healthcare needs of our ever-changing world. Join this life-saving mission. This work cannot be done alone. Your donation helps HPIC provide life-enhancing medicine and invest in health system improvement. For every $1 donated, HPIC is able to mobilize $10 worth of medicine. Join the movement and continue to transform these and millions more faces of health and hope for the future. Thank you very much. Our technical team is amazing. Thanks. So as you see, uh, Health Partners was started in 1990, and since that time, we have delivered over $825 million worth of medicines to over 131 countries. Health Partners is the only charity in Canada, it's the only one that is licensed by Health Canada with a drug establishment license, making us the only organization to whom the pharmaceutical companies can make these donations and we get those out to developing countries. The pharmaceutical companies, if you can name them, we probably work with them. Johnson & Johnson, Apotex, Teva, Bayer, Baxter, Pfizer, PharmaScience, Eli Lilly, and a host of others who are just incredible donators. They give us gift in kind. It comes to our 12,000 square foot warehouse here in Oakville, and we manage between 20 and $25 million worth of medicines every year. We work with trusted partners, so we, as you can see, 15 staff, do not have feet on the ground in other countries. We work with trusted partners. We've worked with World Vision, Plan Canada. We've worked with Food for the Poor, Children Believe. Um, they, all, they all mobilize the medicines in the countries um, who are the recipients, and they make sure that the medicines are all issued appropriately. We do bulk shipments. We do have the opportunity to do bulk shipments. In fact, in December of 2021, we did a bulk shipment of penicillin to Burkina Faso. And, uh, but we're best known for our humanitarian medical kits. And you saw those being packed. I have a box here, if you can see the box. 
Two of those boxes is what's called a humanitarian medical kit. Typically, it's carried by an individual who is going on a medical mission. Could be a doctor, could be a nurse, could be a group who are going off to an SOS village or Mully's Foundation. We have a number of people from this area who went last July to the Mully Foundation in Kenya. But it really is a, pharma a pharmacy in a box. It carries anti-malarials, antihistamines, antihypertensives, antibiotics, antiparasitics, not all antis, we do have ointments. We do have lots of vitamins that are also donated to us and creams. Do you know how incredible it is for people to get a cream tube of polysporin ointment in the, someplace in a vulnerable community in, in Africa? It's unbelievable. So two of these boxes that go as carry-on luggage, total of 50 pounds, um, we asked for a donation of $600, but there's about $6,000 worth of medicines that go into those two boxes. And I can tell you that the recipients are just so incredibly grateful. Who are the recipients? Hospitals in Ethiopia, in Zambia, in Cambodia, Sri Lanka just recently clinics in Haiti, organizations like the Mullies Children Foundation in Kenya, a Catholic religious order in Nigeria who manage a school, food for the poor in Honduras, and so many more, all places where health partners supplies medicines. And I must, I must assure you that all medicines that are shipped by health partners from our, from our warehouse comply with all Health Canada regulations. We comply with all WHO regulations. And of course, we must comply with all regulations and legislation of the recipient country. That's what our organization has to do so that although the, the donations of medicines do not cost us anything, we have to keep a staff busy to make sure that we follow all of those responsibilities. Our staff are very careful to maintain the highest of standards. And in 30 years, HPIC consistently has passed its Health Canada audit. So you saw in the video that the genesis of Health Partners was the response to an emergency. And this year alone, we have responded to 13 global crises, the largest of which has been Ukraine. When the evasion started in, in February, Health Partners committed that we were going to send $3 million worth of medicines to Ukraine. My friends, we'd done that by the end of June. And we already committed by the end of June to send another million dollars. We've already sent over $4 million. Thanks to the generosity of Canadians who have supported us in being able to do that project. But because of our unique position and the gift in kind product donation that we receive from the pharma industry, as you saw in the video, for every dollar that comes into our hands, we are able to mobilize $10 worth of medicines. Gosh, I'd like that in my investment portfolio. <laughs> I have just a short story. You see the Izzy dolls here, and I wanted you to know what is all about Izzy dolls. Izzy dolls are a gift to health partners. There was a young man who was in our Canadian Armed Forces by the name of Master Corporal Mark Ifield. When he was deployed overseas, his mother would stuff his backpack, any room there was left, with these little dolls that she was knitting that he could distribute to the children who he, who he met. Master Corporal Ifield was killed by an IED in Bosnia, and his mother donated that pattern to health partners. We have volunteers across Canada who knit these dolls. In fact, just recently we received a box from Denmark from a woman who has moved to Denmark and she's still knitting for us. So they're still coming in from all over the place. But we use these dolls to pack the medicines. We are required to keep the medicines secure in all of our HMKs. We could use styrofoam popcorn, 
but that's not good for the environment. So we pack as many of these little Izzy dolls into our, into our HMKs, and then they are distributed to the children all over the world. I know we're coming to the close, but I have one more story that I do want to tell you. And this is a romance story, because everybody likes a romance. It's a story about a young man by the name of Kofi Asante, who came from Ghana to study in Canada. Now, why he went to Sudbury, I'll never know. But Kofi arrived in Canada with a master's degree in physics. He went to Sudbury to do a second master's degree in material sciences. And while he was diligently studying at Laurentian University, he happened to meet a lovely undergraduate student by the name of Shannon. Well, Kofi, as the story goes, went off to the United States to do his doctorate in electrical engineering, and Shannon went off to Australia to do her master's of education. Unbeknownst to Calvin and I, there was a romance, and indeed, Dr. Asante is our son-in-law. <laughs> Kofi and Shannon spent their early married years in Ghana to prepare the way for some solar projects because Kofi has a passion for his country of origin and he knows that energy is the most needed commodity in order for the country to grow. Shannon taught school. Uh, she taught a grade four class in the local school while she was there. And she shared something with me that I find so incredibly compelling. One of the little girls in her class, Emma, eight years old, wrote, I am so glad to be in school because I want to be somebody when I grow up. Somebody's. That's what Health Partners is creating. We're working in Ghana, we're working in Malawi, we're working in Zambia, 35 countries in the past 12 months, and we've responded to 11 emergencies. But by providing antibiotics and anti-malarials to kids like Angela or Amma or vitamins to all of those kids in Malawi, cholera medicines to the children in Pakistan, we're giving these kids the opportunity to grow up and to be somebodies. So I want to thank you again for being part of Health Partners Outreach. Your dollars today, I can guarantee you, will change a life and it will give hope to someone tenfold. And I loved your call to worship this morning when it said, together we can change the world. We can. Thank you so much. Thank you, Lois. You're an inspiration. We're so fortunate to have you visiting with us for our services today. Perhaps you will have noticed all the no knitted Izzy dolls around the windowsills. Um, they were knitted to your pattern and were knitted by members of our congregation. Um, and again, to explain to the congregation, Health Partners uses these soft dolls as packaging in the medicine boxes for shipment. They not only protect the environment, but also provide something to love for the children in the service communities. Lois has graciously agreed to come to Coffee Time and answer any questions you may have about Health Partners International. And now Ron Tidy is going to sing a special song for us. <laughs> These anti-aging pills really work, you know. <laughs> When you walk through a storm, hold your head up high and don't be afraid of the dark. At the end 
of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on, with hope in your heart, and you'll never walk alone. You'll never walk alone. When you walk through a storm, hold your chin up high. And don't be afraid of the dark. At the end of the storm is a golden sky and the sweet silver song of a lark. Walk on through the wind, walk on through the rain, though your dreams be tossed and blown. Walk on, walk on with hope in your heart, and you'll never Thank you, Stu. That was fabulous. This is a prayer, today's prayer from the Middle Ages, and it was written by Francis of Assisi. Let us pray. Our Father, each day is a little life, each night a tiny death. Help us to live with faith and hope and love. Lift our duty above drudgery. Let not our strength fail or the vision fade in the heat and burden of the day. O oh God, make us patient and pitiful, one with another, in the fret and the jar of life, remembering that each fights a hard fight and walks a lonely way. Forgive us, Lord, if we hurt our fellow souls. Teach us a gentler tone, a sweeter charity of words, and a more healing touch. Sustain us, O oh God, when we must face sorrow, give us courage for the day and hope for the morrow. Day unto day, may we lay hold of thy hand and look up into thy face, whatever befall, until our work is finished and the day is done. Amen. We now invite the ushers to bring forward today's offerings while we sing our offering hymn, Give Thanks.
Let us pray together. <clears throat> Generous God, from whom all blessings are given, we contribute these gifts in grateful prayer for your abundance and in hopeful prayer for the world, your creation. Please use our gifts, our time and energy, our talents and efforts, and the offerings we make today to comfort and heal, to nurture and cherish, and to bring your light and love into the world. In Jesus' name we pray. Amen. We will sing verse 2 of For the Fruit of All Creation, number 227 of Voices United. In anxiety, may you find peace. In sadness, may you find comfort. In sickness, may you find healing. In loneliness, may you find company. In busyness, may you find space. In listening, may you find wisdom. In following, may you find hope in the one who meets our needs, who says, ask, and you will receive. Amen. We will now sing our closing hymn, Go Now in Peace. After the hymn, please remain seated. Be seated for the announcements. Before we leave for coffee time in our homes today, we would like to encourage each one of you to use your spoonful of loving to donate to Health Partners International Canada. You can do this by going to the HPIC website, which is on your little card on the spoon tag, or by placing a donation in an envelope, or leaving that envelope in one of our offering plates, or by going online to our own Walton website where a dedicated line item has been created, which will remain active for the next two weeks. Please know every dollar is welcomed. Today, the point set is leave. They are gonna be recycled. However, if you would like to take one, if you donated it and um, take them home, uh, you're welcome to do so. Uh, we encourage you to do that because after the services today, 
uh, they will be recycled. Walton is hiring. We're looking for a building superintendent for the weekends, for weekend maintenance on Friday, Saturday, and Sunday due to the retirement of the person who has currently been serving faithfully in this uh, area of the church's life. Next Sunday is Bring a, a Friend Sunday. And you can bring a friend, whatever age. Uh, we're going to have a special service and then coffee hour and another special service. So come along. You can bring as many friends as you would like next Sunday. Thank you for sharing this service with us today. May you have a blessed day.